Hey guys, I wanted to finish, uh, begin to talk again about divine healing. This is uh, part three. Going to keep this real short. I want us to look at a story that we're all very, very familiar with in the scripture, and that's the story of Jairus' daughter. And uh, Jesus is at a feast, and Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, came, fell down at his feet and says, My daughter lieth at the point of death. Come, lay your hands upon her, touch her, that she may be healed. Jesus immediately, without hesitation, says, I will come and heal her. Now, that tells us something right there. Number one, it's, the, it's always the will of God to, to heal. Jesus didn't say, well, let me pray. Let me find out if it's the Father's will to heal your daughter. No, Jesus knew the will of God, though it's clear in the Word of God that it's God's will to heal. From Genesis to Revelation, we have a covenant of healing with Almighty God. Now, I don't know what your doctrine says about it, but go find out what the Bible says about it. Pray, put aside your prejudices, put aside your doctrine for a moment, and just read, search the scriptures with an honest heart, be a Berean, search the scriptures and see if these things be true. So Jairus, though, another thing we can learn from this is Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. And let's just be honest, Jesus wasn't doing too good with the Pharisees and Sadducees. Uh, they rejected his message pretty much had out of hand. Not all of them. There were those who accepted. But I want you to understand the reason I want to belabor this point a little bit is people may not want you right now. People may not want your teaching right now. People may reject you right now. But if you have an honest relationship with God and you're pressing into the deeper things of God, there may come a night when they come to you. You know what? They rejected you. They wouldn't have nothing to do with you when the day was peaceful. peaceful but when the evil day comes, they may come knocking on your door. And they may say, my daughter is in the hospital. And the doctors aren't giving any hope. I need you to come and lay your hand upon her that she might live. And you, we need to prepare ourselves for that moment, sons and daughters of the Most High God. We need to prepare ourselves for that moment. We need to be there for those. It's not about proving that we were right. It's about being ready for the moment so that Jesus Christ gets the glory. Well, we know the story. Jesus rose immediately. He begins to go because he says immediately, I will go and heal her. Now, on the way, a, a mob is thronging him. Multitudes of people. When you begin to move in the miraculous healing power of God, we see that with the great evangelists of our day and of times past. Uh, there's always the crowd. <laughs> there's those who need healing, which are multitudes. And there, there are those who want to see. They want to spectate. They want to see if these things be true. And then there's the, the bunch that comes just to criticize whether it be true or not. There's always a crowd when there's a healing. And so Jesus is going along, and there's this woman. Oh, what a story. Twelve years, it says, she had suffered much of the physicians. She had tried all of their cures. And she had given up all of her money, all of her livelihood. Everything she had was gone, and it said... She, and rather than get better, she grew worse. But she had heard about this Jesus of Nazareth. She had heard that he healed all who came to him. She had heard about the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the maimed made whole, paraplegics rising off stretchers. She had heard that. She had meditated on it. She was a daughter of Israel. She knew that, that there was a healing covenant, but she hadn't seen it manifest in her day. That's why she was going to the physicians. But here was a man. Oh, they called him a prophet. They called him a teacher. She didn't care. She just knew that something happened when that man touched you. And she began to believe. So strongly that the Bible says she said within herself, If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Well, first off, you've got to understand Jewish law. She had a disease that caused her to bleed. This made her ceremonially ceremonially unclean. She wasn't supposed to be around any crowd. Matter of fact, this was a serious crime in Judaism. But yet, <laughs> but yet, she presses through the crowd. She fights her way through the masses. 
and she reaches out all she gets. She don't get to speak to Jesus. I don't even know if she could see, but she saw his robe. She grabbed it. There wasn't anything magical about that robe. It was the anointing flowing from the Son of God, permeating through his very fabric of his clothing and her faith pulling it, her faith pulling that virtue, that healing virtue out of him into her body. And it says immediately she knew within herself that she had been made whole. But Jesus felt that virtue leaving. And he says immediately, who touched me? And the disciples said, look, everybody is touching you. And they were. Everybody wanted to touch him. He's the great man. You know, you go to these uh, rock concerts or these act, these stars. All it, it it befuddles me. I don't understand it. But people want to touch them. You know, they're famous, and so they want to touch them. <laughs> and you know, all power to them. I don't understand it. But that's that's if that's who you are, great, wonderful. But this woman wanted to touch Jesus, and everybody was touching him. He was famous. No one like him ever walked the earth. But there was one touch that was different than all those other touches. It touches. It said he felt the virtue leave his body. He felt that healing power. And it said immediately he began to look around the crowd to see who touched him. The disciples said, you're crazy. Everybody's touching you. But he looks. And the woman said, fearful, knowing what had happened inside of her. She comes and she falls forward and she said, it was me. And she told him this story. I knew if I could just touch you. I would be healed. And he looks at her, and this is what you and I need to focus on. He said, daughter, your faith, thy faith, has made you whole. Go in peace. Jesus said it was your faith. Jesus didn't even see the woman. Jesus didn't know the woman was there. It was not Jesus reaching out to heal her. <coughs> oh, the virtue was in him. Excuse me. The virtue was in him, but it was her faith that pull that virtue out of him. And I want you to know he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And your faith can still pull the healing virtue from the Christ into your own body. You have a touch of faith. You have a faith. You have a confidence that when you need healing, your faith can reach up there to the very throne of heaven itself and touch the hem of his garment and pull healing into your body. You can hear the Master say, Go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. So let's look at what she did real quickly, and then we're going to close. She believed. She heard the report. She Number one, she put herself, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. She put herself in a place to hear the stories. She put herself around people who are talking about this prophet of Nazareth, this teacher from Galilee. She listened to the stories Faith began to arise. She rehearsed them in her mind until faith arose. And then she began to talk to herself. For she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. You need to get into the word of God. You need to meditate. You need to think about the healing scriptures constantly, continuously, daily. When you go to bed at night, when you arise in the morning, if you need healing, you need to think about it, meditate on it, begin to, to bring it into your body, and then you begin to speak. <coughs> Excuse me. Your faith has a voice. Begin to speak it out. Begin to say, at such and such time, I am going to be healed. Because I believe what the Word of God has said, and you will be healed. We'll get in. We'll discuss this story a little later, maybe in part four. But I hope you're getting something. God bless you. Begin to meditate the Word. Think about it deeply and speak it out and receive your healing. All right, bye-bye.